Hey guys, welcome back to another Fallout 76 build on the channel. I'm V, and today I'm going to be walking you through my newest build, which you can see behind me here. I really wanted to create this brutalist, modernist kind of house that looks like it has been abandoned and destroyed and somebody has kind of moved in here and taken it over. But before we get too far into this, I wanted to briefly talk about the location. So as you can see here, we are right at the edge of Harper's Ferry near the Burroughs kind of location on the map. And um, I actually found this location a long time ago when I was scouring the map for uh, basically any locations that were very very close to cities I'm like obsessed with trying to find locations that make it look like you're actually building in in the city or like as close to the city as possible so this was a really cool location that I found although I will point out and mention that um, when I first started building here, I did not have any problems with being attacked. And then eventually, as I started adding more and more stuff to the build, I, I did start getting attacked by all of these enemies that are kind of living in that city area down there. Um, and it usually wasn't a full on attack. Uh, it was mostly just like torturous, constant shooting randomly at the building that didn't really do a lot of damage, but it still, it was really annoying. So, um... Yeah, right off the bat, I wouldn't really recommend this location, but uh, I built here, so. Anyway, um, you can see here that I kind of created this cantilevered effect. It's like hanging over the edge a little bit, and I would have liked to have it go over the edge of the wall a little bit more, but that was kind of the edge of the zone, the building zone. Um, but I'm gonna put up on the screen here a few different examples of uh, inspirations that I had and things that I was looking at while I was building this. Uh, fun fact, I actually have been wanting to build in a brutalist style in this game for a very long time and some of you might remember the um, modern house that I built on top of the dam. So the reason that I chose that location was actually because I thought the concrete of the dam was going to blend in so nicely with the concrete of the build and then what ended up happening is that I just didn't have the right concrete walls or wallpaper. Um, I just didn't have the right look to kind of make it work. I was trying to use the Brotherhood of Steel walls and it just, it had all of these metal bordered edges around it that made it look horrible and I, it couldn't work. So I just ended up switching gears and doing a completely different style of build. And since I had this newer wall set, um, which I forget at the moment what it's called, but I will put it up on the screen, um, I thought that this one would work really well for this style. And so yeah, I think that it works. I had some issues with it, which I will get into a little bit later, but for now we should move on to uh, the actual footage that we're watching here, which is a little bit of the decor um, elements that I put in the garage here. So firstly, I want to point out that I intentionally wanted to do the walkthrough at nighttime because I wanted to show the lighting in the build. And specifically, I really like the lighting in the garage. Obviously, there is no lighting in the garage. It's very dark. I wanted it to have this ominous kind of feeling. And so I really wanted to use these glowy kind of plants on the ground as a way to kind of visually draw you into this space. But anyway, I added this footage here to kind of demonstrate how I got these plants in the ground like this. Uh, you saw that I um, merged the plant down below the rock. I actually just pulled out the foundation, which you do have to turn the wall into a door before you can remove it. Uh, then you can put your item in the space however you want it and then sometimes you will have to burn it sometimes you don't have to burn it but just in case you do and the item is very low to the ground as it was in this situation you can actually merge the flamer trap down below a floor decor item or whatever you want to use um, so that it can reach an item that is lower to the ground and that is for some reason something I always forget about so I just thought it would be helpful to include that into this video and then once it's in there you can just repair the items and turn it back to a wall and you're good to go so continuing on with the uh, tour into the garage here, 
um, you'll be able to see a few different merges and things that I did and again I really wanted the whole vibe of this to be very uninviting I wanted it to feel a little bit sketchy a little bit scary like you probably shouldn't be coming in here and I realized when I was doing the walkthrough that I, I forgot to merge that chessboard in <laughs> there's a lantern on that chessboard and I just forgot about it oops and I have a few different chessboard merges out here uh, one of them is that gas mask that is sitting on top of this workbench and for some reason I forgot to kind of feature it in the walkthrough but that's okay so I really wanted this whole back part of the garage to look seamless I didn't want you to be able to see that doorway from the street for example so I created this hallway area with a free placed wall and I actually had to make a new blueprint because my other blueprints weren't working in this space for some reason so the one that I chose to make which for some reason I didn't have already and it's the best one uh, basically you just place a rug right underneath a wall and then I used a vine but you could also use a catwalk or the blinds and then you basically just blueprint all three of those things together name it whatever you want and then you have a wall that you can place anywhere um, as you can see, I have about a million different blueprints, but for some reason this was the only one that really worked. Um, I just made it like a hallway spacing. And then as you can see also, for some reason, uh, I was having issues with it intersecting with the roof pieces. So I just flipped them up and then I actually also had to burn some of them as well because they were still touching it somehow. So. Anyway, after I put the wall in, I just repaired and replaced all the roofs to be flat, and then that was that. So on the other side of the wall in the hallway here, I just added this big junk pile and I merged it in with this water boiler collector thing. Um, and in order to fit it into that space, I did have to burn every single wall in the surrounding area because I wanted it to kind of go through everything and then I did also leave that outer wall burnt or destroyed and as you can probably see destroyed is definitely the vibe in here destroyed is the word of the day that's what uh, it's what I was going for basically and as we go through the build here I will be showing you various different merges and different techniques that I use to create all of these different things that you see here so I'll go over those little like half wall divider things that I uh, created using the fences I'll go over all of the um, like backwards wall decor that I have on the walls and some of the different chessboard merges that I used. So there's a lot of different stuff to go over here. So um, we can just start with this first area that you see when you walk in and um, kind of how I created that. So basically I'm gonna be showing you a similar concept or the exact same concept as what I showed with the planter and the rock when I burned the rock and it made the planter disappear. Um, so it's basically that in this area where I took the junk pile and I merged it down below the cardboard box and so you'll see in a moment here the cardboard box is yellow and the junk pile is completely gone. You can't even see it at all which means that there is no collision and I am able to just place different items right in that space where the junk pile will be when you repair the cardboard box. So it's just a really easy way to merge where you don't really have to worry about which items are going to be merged into other ones and the order of them, if this one has to go into this one first and then that one, and if you have like a ton of different things that you wanna to put together, it just gets really complicated and annoying. <laughs> and frustrating so this is just a really easy technique to get away from that or get around that whatever and i use this technique in this build a lot and in a little while in the upstairs area you'll see the bar kind of thing that i created and i use this same technique for that so hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense when we get there but another thing that I should point out um, that you probably have been seeing as I've been going through this footage here is um, all of the yellow that you're seeing and all of the broken stuff that you can see when I go out of build mode, 
Um, that's all stuff that I have broken with the flamer trap, the flame trap thrower, whatever it's called. I can never figure it out when I'm recording a video. Um, but anyway, in order to make everything um, kind of be able to blend in as much as possible and get a little bit closer to the walls and like just kind of fit in a little bit better, I kind of just basically come in and destroy everything and that way it removes a lot of the collision issues with the hit boxes. It just kind of allows you to get everything a little bit closer together, which I always like. So we are now going to be moving on into the little kitchen area, um, which obviously there's a lot going on here. I have a lot of different merges and that whole wall. I just had a bunch of different wall decor items uh, kind of layered up. But you can see here that I have this little merge that I did with the chessboard and a couple different eggs. So the one egg is a floor decor item and the cracked death claw egg is a display item. And so I'm going to be showing you here how I created this chessboard merge. As you can see here, the chessboard is red. It will not place hanging over the edge of this toolbox in the way that I need it to be in order to be in the right spot. So in order to trick it into uh, being able to be placed on top of the toolbox, I just put it next to a foundation. It does kind of have to be lined up just the right way, um, but you're kind of just tricking the chessboard into thinking that there's some kind of support underneath it. And then once you have it in the right location, you just merge it down below, just a tiny bit below the floor decor item. And there you go. So the next merge that I'm going to be showing you is basically the exact same thing, except you are using a very small floor decor item. I've laid out a little selection of tiny items here that you could use for this. And you're putting it right in the middle of the chessboard in order to be able to hide it under the display item that you're gonna be using. So obviously for this one, you're gonna to have to kind of think ahead and make sure that the item that you're gonna be displaying is bigger than the tiny object that you are merging with the chessboard in order to cover it up because the whole point of it here is to hide the item that you are merging with the chessboard. So this technique I learned from Reika Wolf and I will be linking her video in the description. And in her video, she used the baseball, which is what I demonstrated first. Uh, but then I also was experimenting with other items. And so I used this little iBot guy. So this technique is really helpful. And the only part about it that is really a pain is the initial merging that you have to do with this tiny object. You saw the footage of me, you know, having to go into the items with free cam mode and just making sure you're selecting the right item and getting it on the pressure plate. It's just, it's kind of a pain. And I happened to see a comment on one of Mr. Church's videos where a person mentioned how you could blueprint the chessboard with the item and then you can just place that blueprint directly onto the pressure plate and it just pops right through right away so you're totally cutting out that irritating step of having to get in free cam mode and merge it a bunch of times uh, so that is a tip that i absolutely wanted to share and thank you so much to the person who left that comment because it is so helpful but as we move along here in the kitchen, you can see on the wall, in a couple places I have these backwards wall decor items and I've used these all over this entire build. So I'm gonna be showing you how I created these. Now, this technique is something that I learned from another builder and I will be linking that video in the description. But also after using this for so long, I use this in basically every single build. I kind of have come up with my own tricks um, to make it work for me a lot better. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So as you saw, I had two cabinets and I placed the wall decor that I wanna use on the back side of it, kind of hanging over the top a little bit. And I also make sure that they're offset both of those things make the blueprinting itself easier, but the main reason that I like to do that is for budget reasons. So as you can see here, I've placed two of the blueprint that I just created, and on the right side, I'm just selecting it 
and deleting one of the boards and you'll see they both disappear. And on the left side, I am carefully selecting the back board only, which is the one that is facing forward. And I'm also doing the same thing on these examples here as well. And what happens when you do that is that you leave the wall decor that is facing backwards and you're able to get rid of the one that is facing forwards, the one essentially that you don't really want. And that allows you to free up a piece of budget, which um, for some people might not mean a lot or might not really seem that important. But if you are somebody like me who always builds to max budget, um, because I pretty much do that every single time and I'm always like scrambling at the last minute to figure out what can I delete so that I can add something else and it's just like it's very <laughs> it's very serious at the end of a build um, so yeah if you're somebody like me who builds like that and every piece of budget matters then this is definitely something that I hope will come in handy for you so as you can see we are moving upstairs now and this is the kind of living space there's a living room bedroom bar kind of ha half bathroom half just like porch area i'm not really sure what to call it but i really wanted to make the downstairs area a little bit more dirty and junky and then upstairs i wanted it to feel more homey a little bit warmer cozier but still very junky and still very much like somebody has just put all of this together with stuff that they found all over the wasteland basically and this bar is a perfect example of that and this is what i mentioned earlier uh, when i was talking about the junk pile that was merged into the cardboard box so uh, the way that i started creating this bar which is just a bunch of different stuff merged together i started with putting that table into the barrel and then when I burned the barrel that meant that the table completely disappeared and so I was able to just put all of that other stuff inside there so then when you repair it the table is just perfectly uh, merged into all of these other items and so um, yeah I really wanted to create some kind of a custom bar that just looked like a bunch of stuff was stacked on top of other stuff. And speaking of stuff stacked on top of other stuff, um, here is the little outdoor area and it has a bunch of stuff stacked on top of other stuff. There are a couple different chessboard merges as well as some more of those backwards wall decor items, of course. And we've got some flowers merged into the kind of like dead wagon situation and i think i just said this was an outdoor area but really it's just like a covered porch and i used another one of those free place walls to create this space and i think what i kind of was going for with this part of the build was maybe um in the past when this was actually a house this would have just been uh, a nice little patio area but um after this person came in and took it over they just found this bathtub and they brought it up and put it outside and maybe sometimes they fill it up with water. Obviously there's no plumbing, but um, yeah, I just wanted it to have this like cozy uh, plant filled corner. But anyway, uh, you can see here that I am using that same technique again that I showed earlier where the chessboard doesn't want to place on top of the lantern, but when I place it next to a foundation, uh, where the foundation is underneath the chessboard, it kind of tricks it into thinking that it has support. So then I am able to merge down the chessboard until it again is just right below the lantern. And then you can see here that I'm having trouble placing the lantern as close to the planter as I would like it to be um, because of the hitbox. And so I just placed the lantern on the very edge of the planter and then merged that down so that they can be a little bit closer together. And I also did the same thing with the planters on the right side and that footage was just right before that. But as we move back into the living room, you can see this custom room divider that I kind of created using these fence walls and a few different items. So I'm going to be showing you how I created these. It's pretty simple. Um, you basically just place the fence on the ground and without moving, you just kind of spam click place and they just stack right up. As long as you don't move, they will be perfectly in place. And people have been using this technique for a long time, um, both with the white fence posts and with other objects. It works really well. 
for a variety of different things, but we've never had a fence. As far as I know, we've never had a fence that stacks in this way where it's so perfectly lined up that it just can make a wall like this. But anyway, um, here I am demonstrating a couple different ways that you can use these inside your house. Um, for a regular wall height, if you have three stacks, they are a little bit too tall to fit right in there. So there's a couple different things you can do here. You could either flip the roof up, place the wall, and then put the roof back onto flat, or it's very easy to just merge the fences in a little bit. It works just like any other merge, and it doesn't take very much for them to fit in the space, and they actually even overlap a little bit, which is nice. And those are like my new favorite thing. I'm obsessed, and I will probably be using them in everything moving forward. So the next thing that I'm going to be showing you here is another way that you can use these chess boards. And this method is going to be for when you wanna put two displayed items close together. I didn't show it in the footage, but you aren't actually able to stack chess boards on top of each other. So a method that I used is something that I learned from Mr. Church. I am going to be linking his video in the description. He did a really great video after the chess boards came out and he covered a bunch of different techniques for using them. And I would definitely recommend checking out that video. I know that this method is something that that he originally learned from a different builder and I'm gonna put that name up on the screen and also link to their channel in the description. But basically what I've done here is create a blueprint using the chessboard that is on top of a safe. It could also be another object. But then you blueprint the chessboard with a floor decor item, and then when you place that over the top of another chessboard, it kind of just drops down onto it, and you can then merge those two together so that they're both at the same height. And that is exactly what I did with my little slothy and teddy bear here. Um, I will leave it up to you to interpret whatever is happening between them, but I just thought it was kind of cute. And I kind of feel like the whole living room is pretty cute. I really like how colorful it is, even though I was worried that it didn't really fit the space very well. Um, but who says you can't still have cute things in the wasteland? But anyway, as we move towards the back of the build here, this is kind of where I chose to put the bedroom area. And if I'm going to be honest, this is like my least favorite part of the entire build. I tried a few different setups and this is what I ended up liking the most and I don't think it's terrible but I I feel like if I had more budget I would have been able to do a little bit more but I did leave this for last so that's kind of something that happened. <laughs> But here you can see I created this little desk area and there are a few different chessboard merges that I put onto this table. I merged this chair below the typewriter so that I could just move it around and kind of stick it under the desk like you normally would have a chair. Um, there's a bunch of different merges going on which is why I kind of used a bunch of different methods. and. Yeah, I just kind of created this little um, stacked up bed area where everything is like sitting on crates and stuff. And then I really wanted this edge to have this destroyed feeling like everything is just kind of hanging off of it. So I used another piece of this fencing and kind of hung it over the edge by merging it down below the ammo box. And I just felt like that helped to break up the squareness of the space. But anyway, the next part that I'm going to be showing you is the roof and how I created this kind of double layered effect. So basically, I knew that I really wanted to use these overgrown roof pieces on the top. And then as you can see on the bottom side of those, they have this like wood grid effect and I wanted it to be concrete. So in order to do that, um, it's pretty simple. So the piece that you wanna be showing as the ceiling on the bottom, you put those pieces in as flat pieces. And then once they're in, you can replace them to a slanted piece, which makes them easy to burn um, or destroy. And once those are destroyed, you're able to put in a slanted piece of the roof that you want to be on the top part. And then once those are in, you can replace those to a flat piece. You can repair the other ones and 
uh, replace those to the flat pieces as well. And then you have two different roofs, one on the top, one on the bottom, which comes in very handy for certain builds that you might wanna do. And I learned that technique from Mr. Church. I'll link the specific video that I'm thinking of in the description. Um, but another thing that I wanted to mention as we kind of make our way out of the build here, um, I did make an intentional choice in this build to not use any glass walls for windows or even the skylight. I did try it um, a couple different ways and a couple different times, but I just ultimately felt like it didn't really fit. And I imagined that after a house has been sitting here for so long that these big glass panes probably would have been broken and destroyed. And that's why I strategically put all of those junk piles around the window areas because I thought, you know, that's where everything would be falling down from. And so, yeah, that was, that was an intentional choice. I just thought I would mention that. But as we kind of near the end of the video here, I'll just have a few more shots of the exterior so you can see like those window areas that I was just talking about. Um, but I also just really want to take a moment to say thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you have enjoyed this build and hopefully maybe you've learned something at least. Uh, you'll walk away from this with something new. Um, that's the goal. That's the hope. That's the dream. And I also want to give a special thank you to my Patreon members. I recently started uploading more content over there and I have a variety of things that are both for free followers as well as paid members. So if you're interested in more behind the scenes content and little tutorials that I'm not posting to YouTube, um, please feel free to check that out. But that's going to be it for me today. Again, I really hope that you have enjoyed this build. I have no idea what my next build or video is going to be, so uh, that'll be a surprise to both of us. But anyway, I hope you have a good one, and I will see you next time. Bye. Would you believe it? I've been looking all over for you. Congratulations! Today is your lucky day! You won the Great Appalachian Sweepstakes, and this wonderful prize is yours! We at the Great Appalachian Sweepstakes appreciate your continued purchases and subscriptions. However, we would like to remind you that your bill in the amount of... $73,428.66 is overdue, and prompt payment is appreciated. Have a great day!